What's going on, Silverbacks? It's your boy, KG Silverback, and we're going to be doing a review on, yeah, the Glace Azul Tequila. But this ain't just your regular Glace Azul. This shit's still in the box and everything. This is the gold and white Glace Azul. Now, this is the most expensive tequila. This is the most expensive Glace Azul tequila as well. This is a $650 bottle. Now this bottle will range from $650 to $600 anywhere, any place, any website. So here's the thing, right? I obviously did a whole lot of research before deciding on purchasing one of these bottles. Now for one, these bottles are very expensive. For two, it's one of the best tequilas known. For three, these bottles are collectibles. There are many different versions. So like I said, this is the white and gold version as you can see. I did do a lot of research before I purchased one of these bottles and I mean, this is not only one of the most expensive tequilas, but it is one of the best tequilas. This tequila is obviously made in Mexico. Clase Azul Tequila Hecho in Mexico. You know, these bottles are actually more expensive over there in Mexico because these are where they are from and that is the purest form of these bottles. Now, obviously, these are collectibles. Like I said, the normal Clase Azul, which will run about $150 to $200, is the white and blue bottle. And this one is the white and gold. As you guys can see, there is a goldish tint on the bottle all around. It comes in a white and gold box. And this specific version of the bottle is $650. Now, I did not pay $650 for this bottle because I have a plug. I have a boy. Shout out to my boy, Jamie, man. He hooked me up fat. You know what I mean? I paid less than half price of and for this bottle. You know what I mean? I I got plugged, man. I, I got very plugged. This is an amazing bottle. I've been so busy. I haven't even opened it. I haven't even touched it. You hear me? So I was like, man, I'm going to do an unboxing of this bottle because, I mean, this is literally the most expensive glass of azul tequila that you can purchase, that money will buy. You know what I mean? Not a lot of people do not have this. You know what I mean? Not a lot of people have this shit. You will not find this in store. You can barely find this on YouTube. I've watched a hundred reviews, a hundred videos of the different types of Glace Azul Tequilas. You know what I mean? Because each and every single different bottle is not only a collectible, but they are all aged and distilled differently. You know, the $150 to $200 bottle, the normal Glace Azul, that one is about uh six months aged in a barrel a oak barrel you know what i mean and then this one is aged in 24 months in oak barrel and then there is a clear glass of azul bottle the platinum one that one is not aged in barrels at all it is only distilled so all of these different bottles are you know have a different process in the making so yeah man like i said i got plugged shout out to my boy for this bro i had to do an unboxing video because this is an amazing bottle it is a collectible like i said the most expensive one so let me stop yapping and let's open this john all right before i take it out the box check it out this is the box obviously it's pretty cool it has a nice little design where you can see the bottle from a 360 point of view and the top of it pops open like this, so you can see the bell. It's a nice little belt, the bell on top. Man, I'm really looking forward to hitting that bell, man, because this is a crazy ass bottle. Normally it's tied down, but I think I took that off already, so it just comes out the box like this. I might even keep the box, fuck like it. Check out the bottle, man, this shit is tight, man. Amazing, beautiful bottle, collectible, like I said, white and gold version. The videos that I watched on YouTube, bro, I could barely even find this specific version. That is how rare it is. You could barely find the white and gold Clase Azul. This one specifically is Anejo, which I heard is, you know, it tastes like vanilla. I heard it's super good, super bomb. I couldn't even find a review of this bottle just by itself because that's how rare it are. You can't even find it in storage. You can't even find it on the website. You'd be lucky to even find this bottle, man. So, you know, when my boy presented it to me, I had to drop a bag and I had to copy man you know what i mean but the specific channel where he showed like almost all of the different collections was tequila talks 
an amazing channel. You know, I went really based off of his opinion because he had every single different type of collectible bottle, Glass El Azul. So I'm gonna leave a link into the description of that video. Go check out that channel, man. Shout out to Tequila Talks for helping me understand the different processes and the different meanings of these collectible bottles. So when I was doing my research, I texted my cousin in Mexico, cause y'all know that I've been going there every month this year. And I was trying to see where can I get the most bang for my buck? You know, are they cheaper here? Are they cheaper in Mexico? I was trying to figure it out. I would think that they'd be cheaper in Mexico, right? Cause of pesos. So I went over there and it turns out they are actually more expensive because you know what I mean? Obviously they're made in Mexico. It is the most authentic bottle, the authentic tequila that you will ever find. And there are so many different types of bottles that you will not find over here back in the States. And I really do plan on buying those bottles and I really want the collection. So like I said, these bottles are beautiful. They are all handcrafted, handmade in Mexico. And like I said, they are collectibles and everybody likes to flex these bottles, man. You know, rappers, artists, you know, you be seeing these in music videos. Everyone flexes them in the clubs, in the parties, you know what I mean? And those be the regular $100, $200 bottles glass of azul the white and blue one man i'll pop out with this one you know what i mean i'll pop out with the white and golden one be like sit down little boy let me show you what a real bottle look like oh that's a 200 dollars bottle yeah yeah try 650 boy try 650 man hear me honestly it would be such a cool decoration to have every single different type of collectible bottles of the glass of azul and that shit would be a flex like holy shit this boy got every single bottle of glass of azul this motherfucker crazy you know what i mean and the best part about it I guess I'll open it right here on camera. I was going to take a shot, but I'm really not. I mean, I'll probably film it when I'm downstairs and I take a shot with everybody. But you know what I mean? I really want to savor every single shot of this tequila because obviously it's an amazing, expensive tequila. And I only want to drink it with people that are close to me, people that mean a lot to me. Let's do this shit, man. Let me take the plastic off because I have to ring the bell. That is why these bottles are also very fucking wanted because it has a bell on it and honestly i really just want to see if it works because that's all i want to do is hit this little bell so let's do it man damn i love this bottle it's just crazy all right guys so now that we have this classe azul white and gold limited edition anejo 650 dollar tequila out of the box, out of the plastic, I really do want to give you guys a top tier good review on this bottle. Now let's talk about the importance of the brand and how they love to treat their brand. Now, all of these bottles are handmade, hand painted, and handcrafted by the Misawa tribe, who are artisans and artists that are located in the central state of Mexico, Michoacan, and Jeretaro. Now, if we were to take off the bell, it seems, you hear that? It seems like the inside and the interior of the actual cap is made out of wood. And of course, the logo and the glass of azul hecho in Mexico is designed on the bottle cap. And like I said, that smells amazing. When I take a good whiff of this tequila, I smell the oak barrel and I smell the hint of vanilla that all of the other videos were explaining about. Well, I might as well pour me up a shot, shall we? After all, I did drop ends on this, so it's only fair that I get the first shot. Let's take a look at this. Ah, uh, now I forget that this is the Enejo, so clearly it is a darker tint. Now, if we look at this, it looks like a nice goldish tint, which is to be expected from an anejo or a reposado tequila. As y'all can see, I got the special custom tequila shot glass. And it shows a man picking the tequila plant off of the ground. Amazing. All right, so now that we have our shot poured, let's sit back, let's relax. Let's take a little bit of uh, aroma sniffs. Mm, now that I really take a good whiff of this tequila, I could definitely get a hint of that agave. I take a big whiff, I definitely do get some hints of that agave. That roasted agave. A little bit of pepper. 
And like I said, I definitely smell some of that oak barrel. So it seems like this definitely does fall within the components and traditions of a very well processed Blanco tequila. Like I said, as you can see, it's got a gold tint to it. Very dark Anejo. So let's take a shot. I'm gonna take about half of it so I can really taste it, get it on my palate, get it on every single taste bud and uh, give you guys a very well honest review. Mm. That's smooth for one. Definitely taste a little hint of vanilla. Mm. You know, I am a drinker. Everybody that knows me personally knows that I am known to put down a bottle. Specifically tequila. That is my favorite brand. My favorite type of alcohol is tequila. Specifically tequila blanco. I don't really like reposado or anejo. I like blanco and uh, I just feel like all clear alcohol digests. You know what I mean? And it has less calories as well. And uh, yeah, I just feel like I don't get much of a hangover, don't really get that dehydrated. And I feel like it just does, goes down a lot smoother than dark alcohol. But this is very good. This does not even need a chaser. All you could really pinpoint is that vanilla. Like I said, when I got that whiff and I popped open that bottle, the first initial aroma that I got was that vanilla component along with the taste test. Very good, like I said, let me go ahead and kill it now. Mm. I got this in Mexico as well. Okay, as it really does sit on the palate, and let me let me tell you something, I'm gonna give you guys the real, you heard me? I'm not about to sit here with my fingers crossed and be like, hmm. I really do get some of the components and the aromas of the roasted agave and I do really get a sense of the 24 aged month oak barrel along with the vanilla and a little bit of pepper. Although everything I said is true, I'm not, I'm going to give you guys the real. And so, you know what I mean? The one thing about alcohol is that, you know, people really do put effort into the bottles. You know, there is always a form of artistry, always a form of modeling, you know, with the type of glass, the figure, the model that they make, you know what I mean? Because typically when somebody buys alcohol, they always, you know, keep the bottles. There are people that actually do collect alcohol bottles. They have a whole collection. I'm barely starting mine out. You know, as you can see here, I have a couple of little pieces. Most of them are from Mexico, you know, and so I think having this glass de azul collection of its own would be amazing it would be something that i could you know what i mean just kind of show off my own collection when i have my friends come over when i have family come over you know we, i want to show them my high-end expensive collection of tequilas you know we could all just try some and just take different shots you know what i mean i think it's amazing and so, you know, I just think we have to have an open mind of this, you know, this artistry because, you know, people do spend money on different things. People have watch collections, shoes collections, jewelry, art, actual paintings, you know, alcohol. There are so many different things that people like to, you know, collect different forms of art, whether it's an alcohol bottle, whether it's a painting, whether it's a sculpture, whether it's, you know what I mean? Whatever it is, people will spend money on it if they find a high value in it. Because when you look at all of these alcohol reviews on YouTube, you literally have people that get suited up and try to say these fancy big words and smell and take their time with the alcohol. Like, okay, although it kind of is, I was gonna say it's not that serious, but it kind of is because if you guys have ever been tequila testing or if you guys ever went wine testing, you know, taste testing to these different um, events that have to do with alcohol, they really do have you smell the aromas, they really do give you the entire traditional process of the distill from the oak aged barrel, from the you know filtration, from the bottle, from how they make it, how they craft it, the type of glass, like it really is that serious when it comes to these reviews and alcohol. However, I feel like Glass Azul, you know, it really is like a targeted bottle because everyone just says that it's just a marketing scheme. It's just a marketing component. The reason that these bottles are expensive is just for hype. But you know what I mean? If it's an expensive bottle in order to get an amazing piece of art like this, then I'm going to keep paying that price because, you know, I'm paying for the time, the patience, the energy, the artistry that really does go into these handmade, handcrafted, hand painted bottles 
you know what I mean? Tequila is already a very popular brand. Who doesn't drink tequila? Even if you are not Mexican, even if you are not Hispanic, Latino, people love tequila. And this right here is one of the top tier, most expensive, limited edition, Clase Azul brand tequilas. Now, for all of my people that are, you know, tequila connoisseurs, tequila consumers, and tequila finishados, you know what I mean? You guys know that when it comes to alcohol, the biggest thing is additives. Now, in English and here in the US, you know, additive sounds foreign. It sounds intrusive. It sounds like they're adding something in there that shouldn't be in there, you know what I mean? But really, in the tequila regalator, you know, regulation and all of that, which is pretty much, you know, making sure that the correct amount of additives, the correct amount of filtration, distillment, all of these things go right. You know, pretty much the regulation of alcohol, but specifically tequila, you know what I mean? So there is only a 1% per whole volume of additives in this tequila, which really that shouldn't sound that intrusive. It shouldn't sound that bad, you know, considering the entire thing. Now, what are additives or aguavacantes? These are pretty much, you know, glycerins, vanillas, oak barrel, auras, you know what I mean? Sweeteners. Now, these are mellowing agents that are put into tequilas, into alcohols. You know, obviously, this is what gives us that loose feeling that we like, that mellowing that we look forward to when consuming alcohol. You know what I mean? These are in not just tequilas, they are in every alcohol, you know what I mean? But obviously, different additives for different tequilas, different additives for different traditions, different processes for tequila. For example, agua vacantes and these additives are only in tequila reposado or tequila anejo they are not and matter of fact it is illegal to have those in their traditional tequila blanco expressions that is what gives these anejo and reposados the darker filtration the darker color that tint in the tequila itself so with that being said let's hop into the conversation about these ultra premium luxury tequilas because there are many different types of ultra premium luxury tequilas that we could get into. I have tried many, I have purchased many, I have taste tested many, but obviously for this specific video, we are focusing on the Glacel Azul Anejo tequila. You know what I mean? But we will obviously, you know, we spoke on the different traditions, the different processes that go into each and every single bottle. You know what I mean? But yeah, man, I mean, everybody loves tequila. This is such a good tequila to drink, you know what I mean? You don't even need a chaser, you know what I mean? Because let's be honest, alcohol is a toxin. It is ethanol, you know what I mean? So it obviously doesn't have a very amazing taste. It's not like wine that has a little bit of sweetness, you know, and a little bit of those auras into there. But you know what I mean? This is an amazing tequila. All of the tequilas that I drink are smooth, you know what I mean? Even my female friends that I like to, you know what I mean, drink with, they all say, that this is like very sweet very vanilla-y like they just have no complaints you know what I mean because normally when I drink like I hate drinking don't get me wrong like obviously I'm a drinker I love drinking but obviously nobody likes the taste of it so you either gotta you know what I mean sip on a lime put some salt into it or have a chaser but for most tequilas they are so smooth you know tequila blancos anejos reposados depende en cual quieres but they are all typically smooth to where you don't even need a chaser for them you know what I mean your girl can drink it your mom can drink it your grandma can drink drink it <laughs> your aunties can drink it you know what i mean everybody be loving this glass of azul you know or just any tequila in general you know a lot of people love tequilas from different ethnic backgrounds different cultures everybody loves tequilas there are some people that hate on tequilas though I know what you guys are thinking, you know, me being an athlete, what am I doing drinking? You know, I always preach don't drink, don't do this because it's a carcinogen, it slows down protein synthesis, it just doesn't have many health benefits and it actually does, you know, hurt your health, you know, as far as your brain, the alcohol gets through your blood brain barrier, which affects your brain, which is why people, you know, get drunk, they black out, they throw up, you know what I mean? But, you know, as long as you drink responsibly and you drink effectively, like, let's be honest, everybody loves having a little bit of a loosened day, you know what I mean? So, you know, tequila, everybody loves tequila. We all know this tequila is obviously one of the world's most popular types of alcohols. 
Now, there are people that love to get flagged, especially when you have a high limited edition, high luxurious premium bottle like this. People love to throw stones at it. People love to hate on it. Some people say, oh, it's just overpriced for no reason. The bottle's not even that nice. It's not even that good. There's so many additives into this tequila. There's so many different things. Honestly, it just sounds like a bunch of broke hater talk. Honestly, you know what I mean? If you can't get the bottle, you know, don't hate on it. Everybody knows that tequila is amazing. And people that say tequila is nasty, they say that it's not good for you. They say that it doesn't go down. It doesn't digest smoothly. They get hangovers. They get headaches. Most of those people just can't handle their alcohol. For example, I have a friend and she said that she hates tequila because it has so many additives. It tastes bad and it gives her so much hangover because like last time we were drinking you know she gets that you know I'm, I told her straight up that Asians are not really made to drink you know Asians are literally known for not being the best drinkers because they get that Asian glow which is when their face turns red and stuff like that and I think that she said that because she got buttered that I said you know she looked like I'm not even gonna say which what I said but you know she, she definitely got some feelings because you know I said that she had Asian glow her face was very red one day when that we were drinking all at a party and so yeah man but I think a lot of the hate for this specific tequila just typically goes because of the price you know obviously a lot of people are not going to pay $650 for a bottle of tequila and since they cannot pay $650 for a bottle of tequila they're gonna hate on it they're gonna throw stones at it they're gonna say that there's too many additives they're gonna say that it doesn't taste good they're gonna say that the bottles aren't even that nice you know what I mean but clearly bottle speaks for itself baby man so like I said there is a lot of different processes that go into making the traditional Anejo tequila the formulation and the fermentation of the tequila Grasa Azul uses a proprietary yeast to ferment their tequila and then they are fermented in stainless steel tanks to which then after fermentation of the mostu is then distilled twice in the copper steel pots. So we already know that each and every single different version, different edition, and different type of Clase de Azul bottles has their own tradition, has their own process, has their own artistry into each and every single body. You know, for example, the white and gold bottle Clase de Azul goes very well with the Anejo version to which the gold on the bottle goes very well with the goldish tints of the Anejo tequila itself, you know, and the other version is the black and gold glass de azul, which uses a reposado tequila, which fits well with the black and gold bottle edition. And the black and gold version of the glass de azul tequila bottle is blended with a tequila joven de oro which is a category of tequila because we all know that there's so many different types of tequila, reposado, blanco, anejo, you know what I mean, mezcal, which is just, you know, an umbrella of categories, you know, because you have different types of mezcals and different types of reposados, anejos, you know what I mean? There's just so many different types of tequila because it, you know, it's a very popular, very diverse, very traditional, you know what I mean? type of alcohol type of tequilas you know what I mean so the joven de oro is a blanco expression tequila which is then blended with a unique batch of eight month French oak barrel reposado which is then blended again with a seven year American whiskey extra anejo tequila which is then topped off and finished with that Spanish sherry oak barrel Sorry, I'm reading these notes off of my iPad behind the camera because I'm literally giving you guys every detail of this because so much goes into the process of making these tequilas, which is why they're so popular, which is why they're so demanded, which is why they're so expensive, which is why they're so high valued. You know what I mean? Every single different type of version, edition of Glass El Azul has its own process, has its own tradition, has its own artistry. You know what I mean? And I want to get all of the other ones that I haven't told you guys about. You 
know there's the Durango version there's the other version that I haven't even gone to I don't know the name of it but those are only available in Mexico so next time I go to Mexico I'm gonna try to get every single version of the Glacel Azul collection and then maybe from there I will give you guys more details and specifications on the actual bottles but for now I'm not gonna do all that because I don't have the actual bottles but what I do have is the most expensive the most rare glass of azul white and gold version tequila anejo so with that being said let's go ahead and celebrate a couple times I don't think I'll ever get tired of that here go ahead and tap it for the one time go ahead and tap it for the one time yeah y'all can see the little logo right there yep Yes, sir. But anyways, guys, yes, I just wanted to give you guys a quick little unboxing, a quick little review, a quick little, you know what I mean, yap sesh about this bottle because, man, this is literally the most expensive tequila that you can find on the market. I got lucky enough by my plug man to get this bottle for such a good price, you know what I mean? It's still, I still spent well over, you know what I mean, what I should have, what, norm, what normally is spent on alcohol. You know very expensive bottle but you know what i mean i bought it because of the deal of the opportunity of getting it at such a discount like what and like i said i want to get the collection i want to get all of them because these are so cool and you know your boy likes to drink so why the fuck not you know what i mean oh man i'm gonna be sharing this with the people closest to me you know what i mean each shot of this is about set about 57 dollars is a shot of this if you get it at a club if you get it at a bar if you get it at a fancy restaurant wherever you get it at the typical price of a shot for this is going to be 57 dollars well actually no that's the regular blue and white one so for this one it might be more it might even be like 75 dollars a shot for this one because this is a special golden white edition like i said glass de azul anejo but like I said, boys, appreciate y'all for watching this video, man. Like I said, I'm going to try to get the other ones, and I'll probably do a whole review of the entire connection. Like I said, big shout-out to Tequila Talks Review. I'm going to be putting his video, his link, into the description, man. Go check him out if you guys want to get a full detail, full review of each and every single different type of bottle because there he has them all displayed, and he gives you a deep and thorough taste test of all of them man so shout out to him because he really inspired me to make this video and do my own version on this one you know what i mean because as long as i get this one all the other ones will come by eventually because i could just go and buy them but this one pff, good luck finding this baby but anyways silverback gorilla pack this one's dedicated to y'all man i gotta go to the gym kevin's waiting on me so everybody hope all is well get jack get money let's go